What's up everybody, my name is Oxyblock and I want to welcome you to another tutorial in the YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at 5 redstone-less uh, starter farms. The reason why is because I know that a lot of people either do not like redstone, do not feel comfortable with it, and maybe they don't even think that it's honest work. I have a couple of friends that just think that redstone is just not honest work. But even though I do not share it, I do respect that opinion and I would like to at least uh, contribute a little bit to those of you guys who do not feel like redstone is your thing. So here we're going to be looking at the 5 uh, starter farms that are really simple. They're going to help you get resources a little bit faster so you can focus on other stuff. And they're going to be redstone less. They're not going to have any dust, they're not going to have any repeaters, they're not going to hear any crazy terminology. And the only thing that is going to be using at, top, at max are just some hoppers. So without further ado, let's just, let's just jump into it. So I wanted to make sure guys that you understand that even though I'm showing the farms in a specific order, uh, this is not in any way shape or form a rank of which one I think is more important for you guys to do uh, right at the beginning of your gameplay. Uh, that's going to be entirely up to you and depending on the resources that you have around you. So make sure that you just watch all of them and that uh, you decide on your own which one is better for you to do at the beginning because uh, for each one of us it probably is a different farm. Now the first farm that we're going to look at is going to be the wheat farm. Food is going to be a main topic on the first uh, three farms that I'm going to show. Uh, so at the beginning of the game sometimes we can find that uh, food is going to take either a lot of time from us, that we're going to be in the case and we're going to have to cut our caving short because we don't have any food. And then on top of that when we come up we don't have any machinery or anything that is going to letting food grow for us unless we, we plant some wheat. And even with that we need to harvest it, make it into bread and whatnot. So this farm is really simple, really, really easy design. And as you can see, it only entails of uh, having some farmland with some trapdoors at the very back and water that is being held by those trapdoors. Once we open the trapdoors, water is going to flow all the way to the end and it's going to carry all the wheat and all of the seeds into the hoppers. And then from these hoppers, it's just going to go onto this chest, as we can see. We can then uh, grab those seeds close all the trapdoors and that's actually gonna make the water come back which is really nice because now we can actually replant this as we need to so that we can uh, go back to our caves and uh, and when we come back we can just harvest it again really easily really simple without having to worry too much um, one of the things that is important to know this line over here a lot of times in order to let the uh, the seeds grow and, and the soil to stay as soil i i do put some water in in here i do actually put like a a water bucket in there and then just close it and that's gonna let everything be a fertile soil now if this design is nice for you but you think that it doesn't yield enough um, bread for you what you can do is actually take this last line the seventh block that you're going to be putting down and just take it one lower. When you take it one lower, water is going to flow over and flow another eight blocks again. So here we have an example of that. As you can see, it drops one lower. You can see that uh, instead of following all the way onto the, um, onto the hoppers, it actually is going to just drop down and keep on going all the way to that hopper over there. And you can do that as many times as you want. You could have a farm that is gonna go all the way down there in the distance and it's gonna yield tons and tons and tons of bread without you having to worry about it so as you can see it keeps on going down it pushes everything forward everything goes into the hopper and there we go and have our seeds a really simple design really easy to sort of automate without having to use a single redstone dust but if you feel adventurous you could always power these blocks over here and the trapdoors will be able to be opened and closed uh, just from a lever Next up, we have a, a very simple design that is just going to convert the extra seeds that we're not planting over here onto bone meal. So say that we replanted everything and we ended up having 64 seeds that we're not going to use because uh, everything is planted when we ever, whenever we open the trapdoors again, we're going to get more seeds. So th there's no need for us to keep on stacking and stacking and stacking on seeds once everything is replanted. So what we're going to have is just have a chest at the top with a hopper it's going to point directly on top of a composter as you can see the, the hopper is actually going to place the seeds on the composter the composter is going to feel every now and then because um, it, it deals by chances by a random number generation and then it's going to go down onto this hopper over here that is going to just bring bone meal onto this chest 
Now this is really nice because just by having this we could actually just take this bone mill and even accelerate this process if we really are in need to 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 eat bread. So really nice, really simple, really automated and uh, and really recommended to do that because it takes uh, as you can see very little resources. You can just have it right next to to your wheat farm and uh, and just make it a habit that as soon as you're done replanting them, you just take the excess, place it over here and uh, and get some free bone mill. So here we have a, the, one of the noisiest farms that we're going to be making today and that is because this is a cow and sheep farm. You don't have to make them together, you don't have to make both of them, you can choose to which one to do. However, I highly recommend that you do both. The reason why is because if you're going to go into enchanting, if you're going to need to make any armor stands and you want to have like any clothes on them, if you want to make books, if you want to make uh, any um, item frames, leather is actually tough to find honestly if you don't have your own uh, your own farm. But it's not actually going to be the leather that is super useful. Having a lot of wool is actually super handy and uh, it will help you guys whenever you have to carpet large areas, whenever you have to make a ton of beds because you want to make a villager breeder later on. If you just want to use the wool for decoration blocks or, or whatnot, just having a continuous and, and simple source of wool is going to be super, super neat. Now the way this farm works is actually really, really simply simple. So let's uh, let's recreate it real quick. So we will just place um, a few blocks like this, just too high. But on this one, we actually are gonna just place a uh, stair over here. So let's just um, actually copy it from here. So we, in this in this front one, we'll actually want stairs. The reason why is because down here we're gonna be placing a chest that we're gonna be able to open, and stairs uh, act as a way to be able to open it. Inside, we're just gonna place. We're going to place that rock on the bottom and we're going to place the hopper facing onto this chest. That way everything that falls inside here is going to go into the into the um, the chest over here, as we can see. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually fill this up with water, just the bottom block, and we're going to get a fence. Okay. Then you're going to be wanting to find some sheep or cows on your world. In this case, we're just going to spawn an egg. And you're gonna come back over here and you're gonna want to put them in there so as you can see they're gonna be jumping up and down bobbing but they are not gonna be trying to get out unless you try and feed them if you have wheat on your hand there's a chance that they may hop off the reason why we are putting a fence on top of it is so that whenever I have wheat in hand as I do now they're gonna go crazy going up and down, but they're not gonna be able to jump too much because the defense post is gonna prevent them from getting out. So as you can see, we can breed them and that's gonna be the main, how this fa farm is gonna function. We're gonna just uh, keep on breeding them so that they, they reach uh, the maximum capacity of 24 animals. So because if we fed them and they bred and now the game is gonna take into account that there are more entities that they should be on that block and it's gonna start actually killing them. As soon as it starts uh, killing them, we're gonna get uh, the goodies, we're gonna get uh, the beef, we're gonna get the mutton, we're gonna get uh, the leather, and we're gonna get the uh, the wool. And uh, the good thing about how the game processes this, uh, this killing the entities that are on the same block is that it actually is gonna kill the adults first, it's not gonna kill the babies. So even though an adult dies, the baby will eventually grow up into that adult and it's gonna be able to keep the breeding process going on. Now next up is one of my favorites that I actually do in most of my uh, my beginner worlds. Um, as soon as I, I start playing, I, I make one of these. Because one of the things I did realize is that whenever we play Minecraft, we we usually just search for an area that we like that we would like to build on. And we're like, oh, you know what? Um, this place over here, this place looks really cool. I have a plains biome that I can expand to on the back. I have a beautiful river going around. A little lake over there, oh this is gonna be nice, this is gonna be perfect, maybe I can even make a little mountain house over there. So we all go through this process, but then we're like, oh I need wood. I'm just gonna start chopping trees. And we start chopping and chopping and chopping and destroying the world around us. And we end up making it ugly. And, and that, I mean, and that doesn't help, that doesn't help. We chose this location because we liked how it looked, yet we go ahead and destroy it all. Um, instead of doing that, I always like to do this super simple farm. This is a wood farm, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's actually nothing. I mean, yes, it looks big, but it's nothing crazy to do. So we're just gonna have some pillars going seven blocks high, and then on the seventh block, we're gonna build these um 
this slab top once you have the the trees down there it will be a lot easier to make this because you'll get like a lot of wood but the reason why we do this is because when we plant these uh, regular oak trees they will not grow as uh, the obnoxious uh, big uh, really crazy like this one they will not grow into this they'll grow into this so that it's actually really easy for you to just um, break them and, and keep on working on them so the basics of how you would actually use this farm is actually you would just come through and just break the stem of the trees you're just gonna break the wood you're gonna keep the wood which is actually what you want and you're gonna actually leave you're gonna not uh, care about it as long as you stay in the area what's gonna happen is that the leaves of the trees will start decaying as the leaves decay they're gonna drop sticks they're gonna drop apples and they're gonna drop saplings as you know now those saplings um some of them are gonna fall in here and they're gonna stay stuck there well, you can always come back and pick them up if you really are in need for them at the beginning but a lot of them are actually gonna fall into this gap the ones that fall on this gap are just gonna flow down with the water and go all the way to this spot over here as you can see over here we actually have a trapdoor on the ground that leads to a little secret area that has some hoppers at the end coming into this chest now in this chest what you're gonna see eventually is that you'll have uh, plenty of saplings, you'll have plenty of uh, sticks, you're gonna have uh, plenty of apples, so it can be a little bit of a food source at the beginning of the game, or if you're planning on killing some village of uh, zombifying some villagers in order to get better traits, so this will be a very good apple source. You will only be needing the gold and a gold farm, maybe. But as you can see, you can plant birch and you can plant oak on here. I will not plant uh, any other type of wood, I don't think you can because of the ceiling limit. But in order to begin the game and just get uh, a little bit of wood going, it's really simple, really easy. It doesn't take a lot to build. And again, the good thing is that you can just come over here, grab some saplings, start replanting as if it was not your business, leave again, and, uh, and just uh, go on with the day. And since you do have a, a bone meal farm, you can even grab the bone meal, come back here, and, and make them grow faster if you really need it. Uh, the, the, the wood at the moment so really simple really fast uh, really recommended so these designs are actually something that i actually do also right away as soon as i start a new world and uh, these are my little automatic smelters the reason why they're automatic is because you can place lots of items that you want to smelt on the top you put all the fuel in the back and this is actually just gonna go down it's gonna fill up the top spot the fuel is gonna go into the back so it's gonna fill up the fuel spot and then we have another hopper that is going to actually point forward onto the chest and it's actually going to be carrying over the items that have been smelted or cooked into, into the chest automatically without us having to worry about taking it out or it getting to 64 and not being able to smelt anymore. I actually like having all three of these designs all together at once myself just because I use this one for smelting items that are not either fast here or fast here. As you know, uh, smokers and uh, blast furnaces cook twice as fast and actually use half of the coal when they when they cook things so really really a a, a good investment if you can't just make them right away i would if you find a village that has a a butcher or has a um, a profession that has a blast furnace i really recommend just snatching those and taking them away with you and just uh, making this little contraption because it's gonna save you tons of time but as you can see, uh, this is going to be it. Uh, these are where the five farms I wanted to show you. Some of them are little, some of them can be as large as you want. Same with this one as well, a little on the larger scale. But um, I feel like doing this uh, early game uh, is actually really nice, if, especially if you can build them all together, because you're going to keep them all running at once and you're going to accelerate your resource gathering. And just by spending maybe a couple hours doing these things, you're going to save up uh, many hours later on in game, having to wander for trees that you don't care about breaking, wander for food, um, having to manually harvest and replant things, uh, having to manually reload your furnaces and whatnot. So really recommend all of these guys. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, really useful for you, even if they don't use any redstone at all. But that's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, please push that like button. And if you really enjoyed, uh, consider subscribing so you don't miss any more uh, future content. Thank you so much again and have a good one.